Welcome to another edition of Anime Cons TV. I'm Doug Wilder. The warmer months are prime time for conventions and it's also a great opportunity to get outside and show off your costumes and do some cosplaying. But with summer setting in, it's important to remember to be careful for things that happen like heat exhaustion and dehydration. This week, we're going to take a look at some of the ways to beat the heat but still have fun cosplaying. Some of these tips can apply to everyone, even if you're not wearing a costume at a convention, but still attending something in the warmer months. So first up, we're going to talk a little bit about what heat exhaustion is. Simply put, it's the illness that can occur from being in warm temperatures for too long, and it's usually accompanied by dehydration. Uh, some of the symptoms that can include confusion, dizziness, really bad headache, profuse sweating, and even losing the ability to sweat because you've just been that dehydrated and that warm for that long is one of those things that it's easier to notice in other people before it's easier to notice in yourself. So if you're doing a cosplay uh, group project or something like that where a bunch of you are together, it really helps to kind of keep an eye on each other. And this is going to be one of the themes that we're going to keep coming back to as we talk about this topic is to make sure you're watching each other, not just yourself. So first off, how to avoid it? How do you get and make sure you don't fall into that pitfall of it? And the first thing I say, and we say this for every type of convention, for anything, do research ahead of time. Look at the area that the con is in, especially what and what time of year you're going. Is it something that's going to be really hot during? Is it cooler? How does it go like that? Look at the average temperatures. If you're going to be going outside during the con, is it a con? Things like one where does it have a lot of lines that wrap around outside the building or is it still pretty self-contained you know things like that and if you're going to be outside like if you're planning say a photo shoot outside think about how long you're going to be out there things like that uh the next thing i say is if at po all possible pick an appropriate costume uh we've seen elizabeth has done some characters from game of thrones and a lot of those costumes have lots of wool, which gets really warm. So she didn't wear them during the summer months because she knew she'd just, it would not be a comfortable experience. Meanwhile, Patrick has worn his 11th Doctor uh, tuxedo in the Dragon Con Parade, which might have not been a good idea in the summer. But there are, there are even some tricks to, to look at when you're building your costume. Some of the things I say is you can kind of give the illusion of layers. A lot of people I've seen, what they've done, if they say they know they have an outfit that has, say, a jacket, and, you know, that's buttoned up and has a shirt underneath, they'll make what they call a dicky, which is just taking a piece of fabric about that much, so it from the neck down, or from the neck up, it looks like you're still wearing the shirt, but underneath, there's, there's nothing, and because it's hidden by the jacket, it gives the illusion that you actually have layers and things like that. You can also kind of creatively sew to make sure that you have ventilations. You know, if you can make some holes under armpits, things like that, to just kind of give yourself ventilation. Illusion is one of the best tools you have as a cosplayer, and it's kind of a fun way to look at creative ways to do it. Sometimes, though, if you have a specific costume that you're set on doing, even though you can still look at some tricks. As I've talked about before, I have a Biker Scout costume that I've made, and some of the things I've done is if you look carefully, say, at these, what we call the little ear parts right here, this is actually not solid. This is actually just kind of a vent. I don't know if it's going to show up on the camera, but that lets some air in. Underneath the eyes here is actually a gap where it actually lets air flow through there. It's also designed that if it gets really hot, I can just flip off the top. Unfortunately, I have a really big head, but other people, when they have helmets and stuff, say can do things like sneaking in small fans into like crevices like this they're usually just about one inch uh, around and they hooked up the batteries are called, sometimes called mouse fans and they're a really good way to just kind of get some air flowing things like that patrick has also done his renamon costume which looks like it would be really warm because it's a big mascot style costume but in fact it's actually pretty well ventilated because there's a lot of holes for air to flow in um, another thing you can invest in if you know you like to do a lot of warmer costumes or it's a costume that you're going to be wearing a lot in warmer months is what they call a cooling vest. You can find these on Amazon all over the place. And it's a vest that you put on underneath your entire costume after you've let it freeze in, the, in, your, in like a freezer overnight. 
and it just keeps your core cooler than anything. I mean, it's it can really make a difference for a lot of people sometimes. I, I unfortunately have not tried one yet, but it is an option. Once again, research, research, but if you're looking at creating a costume, even some of the hottest ones, you can find ways to kind of sneak in. So what's next? Well, now you're in costume. What's kind of the important stuff? First thing I say is if you're going to be in a costume, schedule breaks. Not just, oh, I'll take a break when I feel a little thirsty or things like that. Schedule them. And that way you know that's okay, you know, after every 20 minutes or so, I'm going to stop, have some water, take, take a breather, catch my breath, things like that. Um, if you're doing a photo shoot, say with a large group of friends, one of the things you can do is I'll get every time, you know, between every two, every two poses we do, we're going to stop, take a water break, things like that. Okay. We're switching this character out and this character in while that person's out, they're going to take a water break, things like that. And the other thing is if you think you need more breaks, take them. They're, it's not going to do any harm. Uh, one of the things you can also do there is keep water handy. A lot of conventions now, such as Anime Boston, sell water bottles right at their merchandise booth. They're usually pretty inexpensive. If that's too too high end, you can usually find you know the guy that's selling ice cold water for only one dollar, or even you know go to the convenience store and get the water bottle. You know, just get a Dasani water bottle and reuse it. Almost every convention now has water available for attendees in, in panel rooms and programming spots, things like that. Um, there's you know, water fountains throughout convention centers and hotels and things like that. There is no shortage of water. Well, maybe in California, but there's you can always find places to get water. Um, the other thing, like we said, talking about keeping an, uh, keeping an eye on each other and doing group uh, photo shoots is watch each other. Keep an eye on everybody because dehydration and kind of heat exhaustion symptoms are things you tend to notice in other people before you notice it in yourself. So it's one of those things that you can just really kind of keep an eye on your friends or the people you're doing your cosplay group with and say, hey, are you all right? Hey, have you had water? And, you know, make sure it's, you know, really actual water, not soda, things like that. And we'll get into that a little bit more in a bit. One of the tricks I've learned is... I've always kind of said, if I see one of my friends drinking water, I'm going to have a, a drink of water too, and vice versa. We, you know, you drink, I drink rule. And it's a good way to just kind of remind yourself, yep, it's time to have more water, things like that. You can also buy uh, cooling towels where you wet and you snap them and they kind of refresh you for a moment. And that's good to just kind of put on your neck if you can during a costume, things like that. Um, the other thing to remember is it can get warm even when you're in a convention center and you're indoors you're inside the hotel. Some of the panel rooms can get really stuffy. So even if you're inside, even if you're not in costume, once again, remember to kind of keep yourself hydrated. Watch yourself. You know, take it easy as needed. Um, and finally, the other thing I'm going to say on that is don't be a hero. If it's a big, you know, photo shoot and you're starting to feel awful, if you need to take a break, it's not the end of the world. It's more important that you stay healthy and things like that because when heat, true heat exhaustion sets in, it is not a fun experience and you will actually need serious medical attention. Um, you don't want someone to suddenly faint in the middle of a photo shoot. That, that does not look good. Unless, things like that. So you want to know when it's time to be done. And like I said, don't be a hero. But the thing is, speaking of heroes, this is when wranglers are your real heroes, what we call wranglers or cosplay handlers, however you want to call them, or, you know, it's whoever's helping you out. It's your best friend that's holding bags. It's the people that are helping out the photographer, things like that. These are when these people are golden because they are always going to help you out. They're going to keep an eye on each other. And you just kind of, if you, if you're a little bit worried of it, don't be afraid to say, Hey, I want to make sure you're making sure that I'm keeping water. It's an easy request to ask. It's very simple, things like that. And it's one of the duties, and you can kind of also, you know, maybe say, okay, if you watch me during this costume, I'll watch you during your costume, things like that. And it's a way to take care of each other, which is something we always try and emphasize at conventions is, you know, look out for each other, take care of the community, and it just makes things better for everyone. But 
now we're going to move on to what do you do once the, you once you're out of costume. You're you're done. You got your photos. You did everything. You did the masquerade. Whatever you did in costume, you're done. First off is again, have some more water. Once again, grab your thirsty water bottle. Have some real rehydration. And once again, we only say real hydration. We mean water. Uh, you don't want you actually want to avoid things like caffeine, and you definitely want to avoid alcohol for a while. This is this is taking a break. This is not having fun. This is recuperating. One of the things that I've found are really great are what they call these Gatorade chews. They come in packs of looks like about six. They're really good. You, if you watch the sales at your grocery store or maybe at the pharmacy, you can usually find one of one of these packets for under a dollar. And again, they come in packs of six. They're really inexpensive. Um, they're a great way to kind of just have a, one. And it's again, it doesn't replace water, but it's going to help you kind of feel back, feel like yourself again. And because they're so cheap, you can usually buy a pack and share with your friends. It's really easy to toss a couple of those in a backpack or something like that and say, hey, you know, ha have a rehydrating chew. And they're super helpful. I've had them from different thing, events with my the 501st buddies that I've done and we've worn them. And they've been really helpful just kind of as part of the recuperation, uh, recuperation phase. Um, you can also do things like electrolyte tabs. They also do a really good job. But one of the things is, if you're possible, like if you're staying in a hotel room or you have a friend who has given you their permission to stay in their hotel room, make sure you have permission from the person who's in charge of the hotel room. Uh, get in, you know, get into a nice air-conditioned room, and if you can, take a cold shower. It's a really good way to help and just kind of take it off. You don't want to have it super cold because that can actually kind of set in shock, but you know, cool enough. Um, Another way to do it is if you're just on the run or something, just take a cold washcloth to your face, kind of wipe off the sweat. The important part here is taking a, a break and actually re legitimately resting. You just want to chill out, take it easy for a little while, things like that. If you are if you don't have a hotel room to sit in or something like that, there's other things to do too, such as you know maybe it's time to get a meal like say lunch or dinner, or if you know there's a panel room that or a video room at the convention that's a little bit colder, just you know once you're out of costume, head over there and just take a breather, take take it in, things like that. That's one of the important parts. So that's about it. Um, once again, remember that to you if you're cosplaying, you want to stay cool, not just look cool. But if you have any tips for us about how to avoid heat exhaustion or just stay hydrated during a convention, or maybe you're just checking out a convention, like summer's prime time, let us know. You can leave us a voicemail at 762-ADEQUATE. You can also send us a note on Twitter. Our name there is at AnimeConsTV. Or you can even send us a good old-fashioned email at podcast at AnimeConsTV. I'm Doug Wilder, and we'll see you again next time.